Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 6. We're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for the episode. So this was a very interesting episode because mainly it centered around Chester and Cisco, and then the other stuff was Speed Force Nora with Iris. And then at the end of the episode, you have Team Flash finally reuniting. So it's a kind of weird episode. It's kind of a filler episode. However, it's not technically because... It was about the forces as well. You had the introduction of Stepfast, who is the still force, but at the same time, you didn't have much Barry in the episode. So we're going to break it all down. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so you start off with this conversation with Speed Force Nora and Team Flash. Then you get dinosaurs and Roman soldiers showing up which leads into the time travel aspect of the episode because as we go over to Cisco and Chester, Team Chesco, which I thought was very funny, great name, they're on the case and so you get to see them building this device and they go out into, you know, near the woods or somewhere and they suddenly get overtaken by a green light. So this shockwave goes over them and they're like, what the hell is going on? And we're like, what the hell is going on? But then they mention that their phones are gone, that the van is gone, they start freaking out, and we're like, oh, this is the time loop. Because obviously we knew it was coming, however we didn't know how it was going to start, but this wave has instantly caused it. Basically they get transported back in time literally in the same place. So back and actually not affected, you have Speed Force Nora, who is grounded to reality, she is living in the present, and obviously she is in the form of Nora still. And so she's worried about looking like Barry's mum, right? So that is her whole thing in this episode. But at this point in the episode, she's worried about Barry and she's looking over Barry who is in that sort of chamber or pod. I don't remember what they actually called it back in episode one, but he is there. He is regenerating from what happened at the end of last episode. And so this is the reason for him to be absent. I'm presuming they just gave Grant a break and that is why he wasn't in this episode. They do have a couple of episodes like this every season where the Flash doesn't show up much. They do that on all those shows to give their main actors a break and to actually give some other characters a spotlight. And I think it actually really worked with this episode. I love the stuff with Chester and Cisco. Okay, so Iris and Nora have that really nice moment. Then we continue on, we go back to Chester and Cisco who find out they're trapped in the 90s, 1998 specifically. And so it's freaking awesome as they reference it. And so they're talking about Turtle 2.0 with the green wave. That is a thought that came into my head and I'm sure it came into your guys' head. And also we knew that the forces were going to be coming in this episode, like we knew Stebfast would be showing up, or as he's known in this episode as Dion. But we didn't know he would have a kind of turtle-like shockwave going over with the green light and trapping everyone within this time loop. So there are lots of great shocking twists and turns throughout this episode. However, it is more about Chester as a character. And I think this is his like first proper episode that he gets as the center focus. I don't think we've ever gone that much into his backstory, but he's been a great part this season. And I really like that he gets this focus because it's a refreshing change and so at this point the tv show reveals that this new force the still force who is controlled by dion can actually control time and so they need to create a new device in order to get home to warn everyone and especially warn the speed force because it seems like most of the forces are after the speed force however it's revealed later in the episode that steadfast aka the still force isn't actually after nora well that being the speed force and is seemingly unaware so there is something different about him compared to Fuerza and Psyche which we'll touch on towards the end of this video however throughout this episode he is referred to as a time god I really like that term he can basically control everything and at this point in the episode and towards the end of the episode he doesn't realize the full potential of his powers however with Chester getting through to him he realizes he can do much more than just create a time loop and so he will actually become a time god in future episodes when he returns. And so, okay, let's continue with this. They track Step Fast to a high school, they dress up in 90s gear and it's so much fun. It's great music going alongside it and I really, really dug 
the environment and the kind of atmosphere throughout this episode with them stuck in the 90s and they really embraced it and it had me laughing and I really liked that suit up montage with the music and yeah it was just really great I'm sure you guys liked it as well let me know in the comments below what do you think of that obviously it's just a very cool moment for the show and uh, stepping into a different world as you could say okay so they find a young Parker but later in the episode it's revealed that is not in fact steadfast in the past it's a different person that person being Dion but that's revealed a bit later okay so they're stuck in a game and they're stuck in this time loop and at this point Cisco forgets Chester because the time loop is reset and we have Cisco thinking that he's actually seven years old because he's in 1998 and he would have been seven years old because he's born in 91 so Cisco runs away from Chester and then Chester reminds him who he is by saying you haven't forgot about Game of Thrones what about King Shark versus Grodd all of these modern references wake him up and basically shock him out of it and they realize if they don't stop this the next time the wave goes over they're gonna completely forget and they're gonna be stuck in this time loop forever so yeah I really like those references obviously the Game of Thrones reference very relevant for all of us who watch Game of Thrones and so it's just you know an example of a modern thing that everyone kind of knows about and then King Shark vs Grodd is like a cool thing that maybe is a reference to Godzilla vs Kong the new big film right now I got a feeling that was the reference there because it is very similar you know two monsters going off wow how cool is that and so I think that is the reason why they brought that up okay so then they realize that they're in a time loop Chester was shielded because of his device, but the device is faulty. They need to create a new one So then we go over to the other stuff in this episode So you have Speed Force Nora aka the Speed Force who becomes more human and so Iris talks about Barry's mother They talk about that fateful night when Nora Allen was killed and basically she realizes how much impact This has had on Barry's life and she gets worried that her showing up in this form has impacted Barry in a bad way so at this point she speeds off and so it's basically the reveal that she is in fact a speedster, a literal speedster in reality. I really liked that moment, I was like whoa, okay so they're actually going for this and as you can see in the trailer for the next episode, which we're going to break down probably later today or later tomorrow, she is a actual speedster, she has multiple colours of lightning and it's just a really cool moment in this episode that's going to be continued and they're going to explore her as a kind of conduit for the speed force like she is literally the battery that's powering Barry's speed force you're going to see that next episode but tune in for that video that trailer breakdown for episode 7 today or tomorrow okay so going back to Chester Chester sees his dad his dad was always off inventing Basically, there is an explanation about Chester's backstory and how his dad not being around basically really affected him. And also the fact that his dad dies in a car crash the next day. And so Cisco reveals to him, maybe you were here for a reason. And so Chester, at that point, goes to his dad and they have this really great moment inside his dad's kind of garage. And it's funny because he comes in, he's like, oh, what's your name? And then he's like, Mr. John Boyega, obviously a Star Wars reference and a reference to John Boyega. Great actor, I love him. And it was just a really funny moment and it's a great alias to come up with. But, thi but this moment is really meaningful. And so there is this quote that I wrote down, treasure where others see trash. And so that's kind of a thing that was brought up in the episode where Chester creates something out of trash, as Americans say. And so he reveals, well his dad reveals, Chester is worth it and that is why he does all of the things that he does. So he realizes that his dad was a genius and that he cared about him so much that he wanted him to progress by doing these things and he worked for Chester. So in that way it's kind of like a Legends of Tomorrow episode or more of a classic Legends of Tomorrow episode where we've seen them interact with say versions of parents or versions of people related to them and they're able to have these moments that they didn't have in the past and it gives Chester some proper closure and it influences what he's going to be doing over the next few episodes as you see the teaser towards the end he's working on something a design that his dad was working on in the past and so then we go back to Iris and Nora and their storyline so Nora is at Jitters that being the speed force and so she talks about how affected 
maybe Barry has been by his mother's death and she basically didn't realize how much it's shaped his whole life and so she suggests that maybe she will just stop taking this form and she will just appear in her true form as pure lightning and so I thought that was a cool reveal that she's in fact pure lightning obviously we kind of inferred that and we know that with her being a literal speedster like she can speed around and she has lightning it's pretty obvious that her true nature would be lightning but I just thought it was nice that they literally confirmed it verbally and her talk with Iris actually gives her peace like her showing up and so like Iris is Barry's lightning rod Nora is Barry's lightning and I thought that was like a kind of nice moment and I don't know if the lightning makes 100% but it is a literal thing that she is the battery for his powers and I guess what drives him with energy so it is a very nice line okay so the time god appears it's not who we thought it was it is Dion this character who in the comics is known as Stevfast, and so he is different from the other forces. We'll get to that in a minute, but it affects the rest of Central City. So the green force expands, you see Killer Frost or Frost being taken over by it, and she dresses all differently because of the time period changes everywhere. And so he says, you dweebs really think you can stop me. And so it's a really nice back and forth and a great dynamic between Chester and Dion. I think they had a really great relationship in this episode. I really enjoyed how this episode played into the playful nature of its plot, using the time periods to the best of their abilities. And so you see Team Flash all in different time period costumes. You got Joe dressed up like he's in the 50s, like he's in the musical crossover again. I thought that was a nice reference. And so you got Iris dressed up all cool with the afro, kind of like Pam Greer. I really really like that and then you got obviously Frost being kind of a hipster so it was a nice inventive twist and so Team Flash at this point they realize that this is a new force who is in control who is changing time at random and so I love this villain I really really loved him he was very funky he was great to see on screen and I'm looking forward to seeing him return because the end of the episode definitely teases the Steel Forces return and so when trying to calm down Dion and getting through to him Chester says stop letting one moment in your past define your future. So Chester does a great job of being a hero and Cisco is a great sidekick to him and so Stev Force decides that what the future will look like will be how he wants to shape it and so he will 100% return and change everything so that is something really to look forward to because you're going to see some timeline changes and probably some time travel somehow incorporated into all of this so him as the steel force he's going to return probably sometime over the next couple of episodes and I believe he operates on a very different level to the other forces because at the end of the episode it's inferred that Dion is a human unlike the other forces that being Psyche and Fuerza who are actual forces it seems like Dion has been taken over by the Steel Force. He doesn't know the full capability of his Force powers. So it seems like he is different and I think Team Flash will eventually get through to him after he comes back and makes these changes. And so he is the opposite of the Speed Force as Cisco says and he names him the Steel Force. And Cisco also references all the other forces. He references the Sage Force, the Strength Force, obviously the Speed Force. The steel force like we saw in this episode so I thought that was a nice kind of obvious moment we were expecting some sort of explanation very soon so I really do like the twist that he is unlike the other forces and the fact that he is human but he's been overtaken by this force and he's got powers essentially that's what's inferred it's not 100% however it's very likely okay so the speed force is going to be staying with Barry and Iris so she's going to be sticking around a while. I really like the fact that she is sticking around and so Barry at this point gives a really weird glance. So is there something greater up with the Speed Force and why she's here? Is it more than just her being here for Barry and her needing protection from the other forces? Is there something greater at play? I think there is something greater at play but I don't know what it is right now. However, she is going to be helping out Barry as a kind of sidekick, powering him for the next couple of episodes. And so you have Chester also at the same time building his dad's device. 
So that's kind of continuing what was set up in this episode. You're going to see that continue a little bit. And then the final scene of the episode is the reveal that Frost is going to be sent to prison because Joe reveals that Kramer wants a trial for all that she's committed in the past. And so that is setting up that storyline. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this review slash breakdown for episode 6. It was a really fun episode, I really really enjoyed it and I kind of liked how this wasn't a filler episode. It was to do with the story, even if it didn't have much Barry or the Flash in this episode. So Chester really shined, I really really liked the villain and we made some very interesting progressions with Speed Force Nora. Seeing her as a literal speedster was very awesome and I can't wait for that in the next episode. Remember guys, later today, in a couple of hours time, we're going to have my Supergirl review for episode 2, so that is currently on right now when this video goes up, so turn on notifications to not miss that. Also, a couple of hours later, in the evening, my trailer breakdown for either The Flash or Supergirl is going to be up for their new episodes, so be on the lookout for that. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see.